Uh, today we're going to go over how to complete the DS-160 form uh, step by step. The DS-160 is the non-immigrant visa application form. Uh, you can just type on Google DS-160, do a Google search, and you'll be taken to this website, which is um, the Consular Electronic Application Center under the U.S. Department of State. So this is how the page is going to look like once you click open. Uh, remember last time we did a video about the instructions. It's very important for you to read the instructions before you start applying. That way you know what documents you will need. That way you know what kind of uh, what to expect before you start applying. That way it doesn't take you so long. Okay, so they're saying the first step in applying for a U.S. non-immigrant visa is to complete your application. It takes approximately 90 minutes to do this. After you submit your application, you can move on to the next steps, such as scheduling your visa interview. So uh, you need to gather your documents, uh, have your passport ready, have your, if you have been to the U.S. before, have those that information, have your, like, a CV, of where you went to school and the type and the jobs that you've done because those will come up. So under here, uh, there's very important additional information. Uh, it says that you will be given an application ID once you start the application. The application ID will be displayed on the top right hand corner of the page. If you close your browser window, you will need your ID to access your application again. So make sure you write that down uh, on the side or take a screenshot of that. Save your application frequently. The system will time out after 20 minutes of inactivity and you will lose all unsaved information. Uh, so make sure you're constantly saving your information so you don't have to repeat yourself. Let's get started. Uh, you need to select a location where you'll be applying for this visa. Uh, we're going to do step by step, but obviously uh, the information that I'm going to put here is just for the purpose of uh, showing you this video. They might, the information might not be uh, accurate uh, on my end because I'm not actually submitting the application. I just wanted us to do a step by step. That way you have an idea of what, what to do. So select a location where you'll be applying for the visa. For me, that would uh, would have been Kenya. So, and uh, Nairobi, Nairobi, Kenya. So you scroll down and look for your country. There are some countries that have more than one embassies. So make sure you pick the one that is um, convenient for you. And then uh, you are asked to enter this code if you're not able to see it, you can click these arrows and then you can type it again. Um, I think I can see this one. So let's put that one, CWD8V, okay, enter, okay. And then start the application. So it's telling me to correct the areas in error. The code you entered, it has, it has to match. So I don't see this one very well. So I'm going to change that and put this one, EDE3. And then start application. Okay, so there's some information that you need to read about computer fraud and abuse act notices. Uh, you agree to that if you do. And then this is the, uh, the application ID that uh, they talked about. So my application ID for this application is AA00D1DYDH. So in case I lose or I the computer times out, I need the application ID to go back to, to the application. There's a security question that um, I will need also if I needed to access. And uh, I chose what is the given name of your mother's mother. And that's my answer. Make sure you pick a question that you'll be able to remember and you know the answer. So let's continue. 
So the first page is the personal information page. Data on this page must match the information as it is written in your passport. So that's the reason why you need to have your passport with you. So my surname, the surname, and then there's a help uh, section on the right side uh, that explains to you the things that might not make sense to you or the things you might have a question or about. So the surname is the last name is your family name. So my surname, put it in there, and then give a name, uh, and then if your name uh, appears in a different alphabet, your native alphabet, like uh, Chinese or uh, an alphabet that is not the English alphabet, you can put it here. So if not, you just uh, continue. So that's my first name. Put my first name there and my last name there. Uh, surname. Enter all surnames as listed in your passport. If only one name is listed in your passport, enter that surname. Some people have two names. So you get married and then, you know, you have two names. If you don't have two last names, you only have one, you just put that one. So for my case, it's Mwangi and my first name is Lucy. And then continue to ask you, have you ever used any other names, maiden, religious, professional? Um, other names used include your maiden name, religious name, professional name, or any other name which you are known by or have been known by in the past. So for me, I'll say yes, and I will continue to use my maiden name. It's my middle name. I'll put it there because it appears on my passport as well. Then do you have a telecode that represents your name? Telecodes are four digit code numbers that represent characters in some non-Roman alphabet names. I'll say no. And then uh, we keep moving. Sex, female, marital status. Um, I'm back dating this application for when I was single. So the example that I'm giving is when I was applying initially coming to the US, uh, I was single at the time. So date and place of birth, that's where you put your date of birth. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Then you put your date of birth. I wasn't born in 20 anything, <laughs> 1975. And I was born in Nairobi and the country is Kenya. Okay. So remember how it said we should keep saving? So let's save that. If you see red, that means you can't continue to the next stage until you fix that. Please correct all areas in error as indicated below. Once you have finished, click save or next to continue completing your data. Full name in native alphabet has not been completed. Other given names used has not been completed. So because this doesn't apply to me, I'll put that. And then here I can say NA, obviously, it appears they don't want you to leave anything blank. So save and let's see if we can move on. Other given names used is invalid. Valid characters include A to Z and single spaces in between names. All right, let's go back here and see. Other surnames used, maiden, other given names. If you only have other surnames to enter, enter the same. If you only have other surnames to enter, enter the same given names as above. Conversely, if you only have other given names to enter, enter the same surname as above. Okay, so it tells you what to do. So if you see red, just go back to that spot and see if there's any uh, information on the right hand side that guides you on what to do. 
So it says your application has been saved to the database for the next 30 days. You will be able to retrieve your application from the database by providing the application ID and answering the security question. So I wanted to do this so that we can go back to the application and see. So continue with the application. Okay. So next, we are still on, on my personal information. Country of origin, my nationality is Kenya. Do you hold or have you held any nationality other than the one indicated above on nationality? I would say no, because remember, uh, right now, yes, I have dual citizenship, but I'm doing this application as if it was back in the day when I was applying to come to the US for the first time. And at that time, I was only a Kenyan citizen. Are you a permanent resident of a country region other than your country region of origin indicated above? I'll say no. If yes, then you, you will be uh, prompted to put the country. Uh, national identification number. So my ID number, then I would put it there. Uh, then uh, social security does not apply because I didn't have one at that time. And then uh, that does not apply. So uh, next, if everything looks good, it will let you go to the next page. Uh, purpose of the trip to the US. So there's a drop down here. And the reason why I was coming to the US back in the day was uh, tourism. I don't know if that is there. So let's see if tourism is there. Because uh, you have to scroll to find your, your reason for travel. So let's see, foreign government, treaty, academic. If it's a student, then you would do that but I wasn't coming as a student. He wasn't a fiance. Uh, let's see. Temporary business pleasure visitor, B visa. There you go. Uh, select, specify business and tourism, temporary visa. So I came on a B2 visa. So that's the one that um, I would put there. B2 for tourism. Okay, moving on. Have you made specific travel plans? Yes, because at that time I knew when I was going to travel and uh, arrangements had already been made. But if you haven't done that, then you would say no, you haven't done, had any um any uh, plans. If you are unsure of your date of arrival in US or date of departure from US, please provide an estimate. So the date of arrival, um, obviously I can't put a, a, a past date. So let's just say April 4th, uh, 2024. Arrival flight, if known, uh, okay. Ar arrival city, arrival city for me was Atlanta. And the date of departure from US. So let's say I'm gonna be here for 10 days. So I would, do the 15th of April, 2024. Uh, departure city is still Atlanta. Provide the location you plan to visit in the US. Uh, the world of Coca. Okay, so let's move on. Let's see if he's gonna let us continue without putting that information there. Address where you'll be staying in the US. Street number, very city, Atlanta. State, Georgia. 
zip code 30313. Person entity paying for your trip, uh, say other company or organization, uh, the present employer, that's what I would say, because uh, my trip was paid by uh, the company that I was working for. All right, persons traveling with you is, is the next page, travel companions. So as you can see on the left side, as we continue to fill in the blanks or filling the form, it changes to blue, that means, and it puts a check mark here, that means we are doing good. So travel companions information, persons traveling with you. Are there any persons traveling with you? Yes or no? This is a straightforward question. So for me at that time, it was a no. And then the next question is previous US travel information. Provide the following previous US travel information. Provide complete and accurate information to all questions that require an explanation. Have you ever been in the US? At that time, the answer was no. Have you ever been issued a US visa prior to that? My answer was no. If it's yes, you would click yes and you would explain. Have you ever been refused a US visa or been refused admission to the United States or withdrawn your application for admission at the port of entry? Uh, no. Uh, if yes, then be prepared to explain. Has anyone ever filed a, an immigrant petition on your behalf with the United States Citizenship and Immigration Services? Uh, no. If yes, then you'll be prompted to explain. And the next section is your address and phone number. So my home address, um, that, so that will be the address back home. If it's a PO box, I'm not sure if it's going to let, because the way this uh, format is, it's like for US, uh, for US addresses. I'll just say it doesn't apply there. And I'll say it's Kenya. I just want to see if you accept this format of our Kenyan um, address. Is your mailing address the same as your home address? I'll say yes. Uh, so my primary phone number, so it would be a Kenyan phone number at that time. And then um, <clears throat> secondary phone number does not apply. The, uh, you must provide a primary phone number. The primary phone number should be the phone number at which you are most likely to be reached. This could be a landline or a cellular mobile phone. If you have an additional landline or a cellular number, please list this as your secondary phone number. So you put your phone number there and then uh, we'll continue and see if uh, our address will be acceptable uh, as we move on. Work phone number. If you have a work phone number, you can put it there. If not, you can say it doesn't apply. Have you used any other phone numbers in the last five years? If you have, yes. If you haven't, if you're people that keep a uh, phone line for a long time, then, then you keep the same phone number that you had written up there. Uh, email address. So your email address, you'll put it here, okay? And then, have you uh, used any other email in the last five years? Uh, yes, if you have, no, if you haven't. And then social media, do you have a social media presence? At that time, I did not have a social media presence. At this time, if you have a social media presence, then um, I would recommend if you have LinkedIn, uh, to put your LinkedIn uh, here. Yeah, that's the first one that, that I would put. I would put LinkedIn before any before before I put anything else. If you have a YouTube channel that you, you want to put there, then that's fine. If you want your Instagram to be the one that you want to put there, then that's okay. Do you wish to provide information about your presence on any other websites or applications you have used within the last five years? to create or share content? Um, if you do, yes. If you don't, um, I'll just say no. Uh, let's save uh, our application because it's been a while since I started talking. I don't wanna go on and on for 20 minutes and then we get uh, 
we get shut down, which is what has happened, by the way. So now we have to retrieve this information. So in order to retrieve the application, we have to go back here. So this is what I was saying, that if you don't continuously save your, your form, you will have to come back to this section. <clears throat> it's like you're signing in again because uh, it, it times you out. So let's retrieve the application. Then remember the application ID, that's why you have to write it down because it asks you for it. And then retrieve application. All right, so it's saying that um, I need to correct. So I think this D I was a D1, I hope. Okay, so that was a D1, not a DI. And then first letters of my surname, first five letters. And then year of birth. And the mother's given name. So you have to remember those things when you initially start the application, because if you forget them, then you won't be able to go back to your application. All right, so we got up to here. So let's see. Because we had to do it again, then we have to quickly go back and do it again. So it's asking for social media identifier. So your LinkedIn account. Okay, so. Okay, so let's continue with the application. We've moved past that section of address and phone number. And now we are moving to the next step of your passport. So for the passport information, uh, Travel document type is I uh, have a regular passport, uh, passport travel document number. So you have your passport number. And then uh, you don't have a passport. I don't have a passport book number. So uh, country that issued their passport or travel document, Kenya. And where was the passport? travel document issued, Nairobi for me, uh, state of province, Nairobi, and it's in Kenya. The passport issuance date, depending on when you got the passport, so you put your date there for when you, you got your passport in February 2024. And expiration date, I'm just putting random numbers of expiration date, 2029. Have you ever lost a passport or had one stolen? I wanna say no. If it's yes, then uh, you will explain. And then uh, the next contact person organization in the United States. Uh, contact person was last name Smith, first name John. Organization was Coca-Cola. Um, select relationship to you, uh, business associate, because he was assigned to me to be the one uh, receiving me at the airport. So address and phone number of point of contact. Obviously you would have that information if that's your contact person. So I will just put um, the place where I was going. So I'll pull 121, 121, Baker Street, in the state of Georgia. And the zip code is 30313. Uh, phone number, okay. Email address, uh, given name. Oh, wait. 
given name and then date of birth. Okay, so moving on uh, to the next section is the family information and relatives. So uh, remember how they said this uh, form takes a long time? Yes, it does. So make sure you have uh, ample time, like an hour and a half to complete this form if you want to do it in, in a one shot. Okay. Uh, please provide the following information concerning your biological parents. If you're adopted, please provide that information for your adoptive parents. So father's full name and date of birth. So father's full name, uh, surname. Okay, and then is your father in the US? Yes, if they are here and no, if they are not. Mother's maiden name. And then date of birth. Okay, is your mother in the US? Uh, no, she wasn't. Do you have any immediate relatives not including parents in the United States? Yes, if you do, no, if you don't. Uh, immediate relatives means fiance, fiance or fiancé, uh, spouse, husband or wife, child, son or daughter, or sibling, brother or sister. So work, education and training. Uh, so I'm supposed to correct something has not been answered. Do you have relatives in the US? No, okay. So let's save so we don't have to go back to the beginning of the application. And then continue the application. Okay. And then we go here to work next, work education training. Provide the following information concerning your current employment or education. So select one. Current employment or education. Primary occupation. All right, what was I doing at that time? So I want to do communications. Uh, present employer or school. So at that time, uh, we'll put that. Uh, address, mm, I think it was a PO box number. Yeah, PO box through 30, four, five, six. And it was in Nairobi. Mm. Phone number. What was KBC's phone number? I'm just putting a random number, but uh, you would put your employer's phone number there, your employer's address, and uh, the name of the company that you work for. If you're in school, then you put the school, the address, and the phone number. And then when did you begin? So I would say that I started in January of 2000 and and then monthly income in local currency if employed. So, oh, I don't know. Kenya shillings. Describe your duties. So, um, you would say what you are doing, or, you know, and then continue. Continue. Provide previous work, education, training information. Were you previously employed before that? I want to say no. If yes, you would uh, put the previous employer. Have you attended any educational institutions at a secondary level or above? Yes. If you went to uh, uh, secondary school or college, then you would put the college here. So I'm just going to put the name of my high school. And then um, the address. Uh, 
and then the city and the uh, postal code does not apply. If it applies, then you put it there, course of study of the high school. If you are, uh, went for higher education, then you would put uh, the degree that you went for. So you'd say uh, you attended school from what year to what year. So I'd uh, say, uh, 19, what year was that? And then to, I think schools end in December or November in Kenya, I think. The school system here in America and, uh, and, and Kenya is different. So 2000. Okay, so uh, next, Ooh, we didn't save. So do we have to go back and do it again? Yes, so let's go back again. So it's important to remember to keep saving because um, it keeps uh, kicking you out. And you have to remember to sign in again. So that's why you're supposed to have the ID number handy, application ID. So retrieve your application, application ID, do you? Then this was a one, it wasn't an I. So let's retrieve it. And then your birth, and then mother's maiden name. So you gotta keep doing this if you forget to save. All right, so moving on to the next section. Uh, we said we were not previously employed, and we said that we attended a school, high school. So see, this is a problem of not saving uh, your document as you go, because then you're forced to do this again. So we're quickly gonna do that. All right, so let's save that so we don't lose it again. Okay, so continue your application. Now we're moving on, this is a long application, but we are halfway more than halfway done. So you can see we've checked off quite a few things on the left side. Okay, additional work education and training. Provide the following work education or training related information. Provide complete and accurate information to all questions that require an explanation. Do you belong to a clan or tribe? Uh, if yes, then say yes. If no, then say no. Uh, let me see. Uh, my tribe is Kikuyu. Um, list of languages you speak. I speak English, Kiswahili, and Kikuyu. Okay. And then have you traveled to any other countries within the last five years? I want to say no. If yes, then be prepared to explain. Have you belonged to or contributed to or worked for any professional, social or charitable organization? I'd say yes, no. I mean, no, but if yes, then you would put yes. Do you have any specialized skills or training such as firearms, explosives, nuclear, biological, or chemical experience? Uh, I'll say yeah, no, but if you do, then say yes. Have you ever served in the military? I'm um, saying no, but if you have, then you put yes. Have you ever served in, been a member of, or been involved in, with a paramilitary unit, vigilante unit? rebel group, guerrilla group, or insurgent organization, you would say no. I'm saying no, but if it's yes, then you would put yes and explain. 
Okay, so they're saying that the language name is invalid, only the following characters are valid. Okay, okay. So uh, what do they want me to do? They don't want any commas or anything like that. So I'm gonna remove that and see if that works. Let's see if that works. Okay, security background questions, part one. Oh my God, there are five parts. So let's see if we can go through this quickly. Provide the following security and background information. Uh, make sure that your answers are accurate and true. Do you have a communicable disease of public health significance? Communicable diseases of public significance include cancroid, gonorrhea, granuloma, angina, and there's a whole list of them, leprosy. So read those active tuberculosis. I know that's a big one. So read that and then answer yes if appropriate, if no, and, and no if you doesn't apply to you. Do you have a mental or physical disorder that poses or is likely to pose a threat to the safety or welfare of yourself or others? So be honest with your answers. Are you or have you ever been a drug abuser or addict? Uh, so answer these questions appropriately is four, five, actually five parts. Have you ever been arrested, convicted of any offense or crime, even though subject to a part of a pardon, amnesty or other similar action? Uh, have you ever violated or engaged in a conspiracy to violate any law uh, relating to controlled substances? Are you coming to the United States to engage in prostitution or unlawful commercialized vice? Or have you been engaged in prostitution or procuring prostitutes within the last past years? So these are just personal questions that only you would know the answers and make sure you answer honestly. Have you ever been involved in or do you seek to engage in money laundering? Have you ever committed or conspired to commit a human trafficking offense in the United States or outside the United States? Have you ever knowingly aided, abetted, assisted, or colluded with an individual who has committed or conspired to commit a severe human trafficking offense in the United States or outside the United States? Are you the spouse, son, or daughter of an individual who has committed or conspired to commit a human trafficking offense in the United States or outside the United States, or have you uh, and have you, within the last five years, knowingly benefited from the trafficking activities? So you answer the questions, the security background uh, and background questions so as appropriately as you can. So part three, do you seek to engage in espionage, sabotage, export control violations, or any other illegal activity while in the US? Do you seek to engage in terrorist activities while in the United States or have you engaged in terrorist activities? Have you ever or do you intend to provide financial assistance or other support to terrorist or terrorist organizations? Are you a member or representative of a terrorist organization? Uh, moving on, there are so many questions. So just answer these questions uh, uh, appropriately. They are all uh, security questions that you need to read, understand what they're asking, and then answer appropriately. So that's uh, part three. Let's move on to part four of the security and background uh, questions. Uh, have you ever sought to obtain or assist others to obtain a visa entry into the U.S. or any other United States immigration benefit by fraud or willful misrepresentation or other unlawful means? Have you ever been removed or deported from any country? So if it's yes, then put yes and explain. Uh, because don't don't lie on these questions because they have ways of finding out. So let's save so we don't have to go back to the initial initial section. So background questions, section five. Have you ever withheld custody 
of a US citizen child outside the US state, United States from a person granted legal custody of a US court? Have you voted in the United States in violation of any law or regulation? Have you ever renounced United States citizenship for the purpose of avoiding taxation? So answer those questions and then you save and continue the application. The next section is um, a disclaimer here where you need to upload your photo. So starting November 1st, 2016, eyeglasses will no longer be allowed in new visa photos. So it says click on the upload your photo button, button below to access our photo submission system. Once there, you'll be given instructions on how to supply an approved photo for your visa application. After you have selected the photo to upload and the system verifies the photo is acceptable, you will return to confirm photo to continue the application process. So let's click on here and see. Uh, it says upload photo. So there's a, a photo tool um, and requirements of how the photo is supposed to look, the standards, the specifications. Uh, make sure you have the right photo already on your computer. Upload selected photo. All right, so my photo passed quality standards. So there you go, continue using this photo. Okay, so we have past that section, we can save it so we can save our photo and then continue the application. So the next page is to review your application, make sure everything is correct. So it says here, please note that you may be required to bring a passport like photo to your interview. So we just have a copy of that. Your photo has successfully been uploaded and passed all the quality checks. Your photo submission has been accepted. You can continue your application at the visa website. Okay. So the next step would be, um, after this, will be to review all the information that you have submitted, make sure all the information is correct, and then you would e-sign it. Uh, it will be review, and then, oh, here, here it comes. So everything has been uploaded. So the next thing will be to review your information, make sure that everything is correct, uh, go over all this information and check for errors. If you want to print the pages, you can um, for your own records. And then uh, just go through the whole application make sure everything is correct. All the information, security background check, all that information, make sure it's correct. And then um, after that, you will be asked to sign and submit. So when you get to the sign and submit, you have to read read the information carefully before dating, electronically signing and submitting the application. So you read all that and then you certify that you have received the US government fact sheet on female genital mutilation or cutting, FGM. So all this is information that you will read and then you click on there to say that you have read and, and agree, uh, prepare our application. Did, did anybody assist you in filling out this application? I will say no, because I did it myself. If somebody else did it on your behalf, then you say yes and it will ask you to put the name of the person. And then enter your passport and document number. So you put your passport here number here and then you'll put your code, this code here, and then it will uh, light up for you to sign and submit your application. Obviously, I'm not going to sign and submit this application because it's just for the purpose of this video, just to show you how the process is. After you sign here, you'll see the confirmation here. Uh, you will go to the next page and it will be the confirmation page. Remember to print the confirmation page 
print it out, take a screenshot of it, but uh, no, print it out. Print it out and have it in your documents that you'll take to the, um, the embassy for your visa interview. So that's it. That's the process of applying for a non-immigrant visa, the B1, B2 visa. It's a long process, but uh, if you have all your documents ready, it, it doesn't take that long. So I hope that you guys uh, followed um, the process step by step. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. That was a long application. But thank you guys for hanging on for, the, uh, for that whole period of time. Uh, leave me a comment. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't. Like, share this video. You never know who might need this information. So let's share the information. And uh, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time.